we give the floor to Mr. Schmoltz, Executive Director, Australian, Australian Institute for Research on West. Thank you so much for this kind invitation. I'm very happy that I can present here. Uh, well, thank you. Um, I want to talk a, a bit about um, the landscape for digital learning and the SME needs. Um, thanks also for the for the kind introduction. I'm the executive director of the Austrian Institute for Research on SET. Additionally, I took on the uh, as a chairperson of the Future Learning Lab um, of the Teacher Education College in Vienna, where we have um, very exciting things to do, especially now in the moment. And on top of that, I'm a postdoc researcher at the Department of Education at the University of Vienna. And I want to take you on a, on a quick journey on, on the landscape of digital learning to see what is around digital learning for SMEs, what are the key structural nodes that we need to look at so that we can see what are the actual needs for SMEs when it comes to digital learning. So digital learning is this tree that you can see and it grows but it needs of course a ground soil water the sun the sky so the surroundings are very important the resources that are substantiated for the smes are very important so i want to look a bit around smes to get to the point what is needed to engage in digital learning um, for SMEs. First of all, at the moment we are in times of a global digital revolution. I'm judging from this projection of Hilbert and Lopez, who are two information scientists and who have calculated the amount of data that is stored analogy and that is stored digitally. And here you can see just 2002, so 18 years ago, the amount of digital media has overtaken the amount that is stored analogy. So the digital revolution has just started. And it is not a great revolution to have a digital picture compared to analog picture or to put something in the scanner. But the way the data can be um, worked and proceeded in digital form changes the whole landscape of business uh, worldwide. A second very important thing for the landscape of digital learning is that we have a great big tech monopoly. Here are just some numbers in billions of dollars calculating the net worth of the three or four greatest firms and, and how they are dominating um, the business sectors at the moment. So we are in a global digital revolution. We, are, we have a big tech monopoly and the digital divide in terms of competences, both organizational and individual, uh, is becoming greater and greater. Um, there are a lot of SMEs that are very, very well do, uh, done with digitization, both in services and internally in their working process, but some they don't, especially graphs. Um, there is not, not so much digital needed. Sometimes there is only one PC in an SME and that might be the one of the, of the director. Just an example uh, on the digital gender gap here, four dimensions have been studied in terms of access, use, competences, and openness towards digital media. And you see that, that women are strongly disenfranchised uh, in terms of access, use, competences, and openness uh, when it comes to, to digital media and digital tools. So we do have a, a digital divide. It manifests also as a digital gender gap, and this is also one of the greater landscape issues we are having when it comes to using digital learning in SMEs. And then there are very great national regulations 
and regional regulations on digital learning. Just to give you an example, um, and if you want to read further into that, there is the digital education policies in Europe and beyond. And there is the digital education action plan starting next year, and it will last six years for the European Union. So the landscape is addressed by the European Union, the landscape is addressed by regional and national regulatory bodies, and there is an emphasis on digital learning for SMEs, and we will see uh, in detail what, what, what comes here. So this is a bit of the landscape that we see that surrounds digital learning for SMEs, um, and you see that there is still a huge wide space. So digital learning is actually something very individual. You can learn with media, with digital tools, you can learn for digital competences. Uh, so digital learning is something very individual. It's, it's, uh, learning happens within the individual. So we need a nice structure that mitigates between the landscape of digital learning and the individual learning. And here, the actual needs in digital learning um, come into place for the SMEs. So the SMEs are a great, great factor when it comes to um, building digital competences. They have a great need in digital competences for the SME stuff, but it's also a burden to take. It's, it's, it's a lot because the global digital revolution is going on so fast that SMEs alone, small businesses alone, cannot take the whole burden of building digital competences in in-house continuous vocational education. I give you a small hint of what kind of digital competences are in need for the SMEs. First of all, bigger SMEs, bigger SMEs need to Excuse me? Eccoci, eccoci. Allora, andiamo un attimo, non capisco perché non le abbia trovate. Allora, andiamo un attimo a prendere... Umberto, we can hear you. Eh. <laughs> ok, sorry. No worries, it's ok. <laughs> um, there are two different, two ends to, to what kind of digital competences SMEs need and, and the staff of SMEs need. First of all, for bigger SMEs, the staff needs digital competences to provide continuous FED in-house. We need to learn and keep on learning. The idea of lifelong learning is something that is very important and becomes more and more important as digital revolution is changing circumstances. It's, it's changing businesses so fast. So it is an important task to provide some kind of in-house uh, continuous FED um, and work with digital media. So the, especially uh, bigger SMEs need digital competences to provide continuous um, vocational education in-house. And of course, digital competences need to be a result of continuous FED in, in SMEs. And I want to tap into both of those areas just, just very quickly. What is needed to provide continuous FED in-house. First of all, the basic, the very fundament is tech know-how. Of course, there needs to be some staff members that know its way around technology, that know its way around, secondly, of educational technology. So what tools are there to provide continuous vet in-house? What tools are there to provide new training programs that are focused on the future and there is know-how to gain here. There are competences needed both in tech and in ed tech. And thirdly, which is also a big area, there is the need of pedagogical know-how. We cannot just transfer knowledge. We need to build competences. And this shift needs additional pedagogical know-how, especially when it comes to teaching with digital media or for digital competences. So the second part is digital competences for SME staff is a result or needs to be a result of, of that. So here I'm 
here I'm um, pointing you to a to a project we are we are doing right now. Um, and you can see at InnoTrain and it is, there, there are some results of studies in five countries and we did a needs analysis for innovative training programs for SMEs which largely tap into what kind of digital competences are needed. But it's very diverse in every country, uh, it's very different, so I cannot go into details, but please see and visit um, uh, the, the website, you will find results, you can also give me an email or a call if you're interested in more details. Um, we had field research in Spain, in Greece, in Italy, in Germany, and also in Austria, and we see that at least 50% of all the needs uh, uh, are uh, for digital competences. So this is this is a very uh, very broad thing, but details are very very differentiated, and we need to look very closely what is needed in special SMEs and how they can go one step further with their business uh, when they have people at, in place that that know about digital media. Uh, the second the second. I want to address uh, is also a result we did in, in Austria for the Austrian Trade Union Federation. Um, here you can find also a link where the full report is there. It's in German, unfortunately, but I, I can give you, an, uh, if you're interested, an English translation. Um, and we, we developed a framework of digital competences for the VET sector and for SMEs, and we looked into the very needs in different professions, in different industries, vocations, in different sizes and grades of digitization from SMEs. And here again, it's very differentiated. It differs a lot in the, in the different sectors. So we need to look very, very closely on what to provide and have ready to fit programs and infrastructures um, for continuous bed and SMEs. But I want to hold you once and, 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 and keep one thing to the point. We cannot ask SMEs to do that for themselves at the moment. So don't let's not jump to very fast conclusions in saying the SMEs should be accountable and responsible for doing continuous FED in-house and providing a future for themselves because we do have a huge digital divide. Some businesses are not there yet and they need a hand and they need infrastructure and we have the COVID crisis. So the SMEs, especially the smaller SMEs, are busy running and keeping their businesses alive. We cannot ask them to do continuous FED at the moment. It would be another burden and they are struggling very, very much already. So do it yourself is too much to ask for, for the SMEs at the moment. So I want to give you an idea on, on, on what we might need to mitigate this need. On top of these regional and national regulations on digital learning, the actual need for SMEs that we have provisions, that we have projects in digital learning for SMEs that give them the infrastructure and give them the opportunity to attend, give them the money to attend, give them some leeway, some time to actually go into digitization for their services, for their work processes, for their products. It's a tough, it's a tough transition and there needs to be a lot of external funding which is provided, as, as um, said, uh, as Umberto pointed out, but he also said we do need digital intervention, digital infrastructure and educational intervention and educational infrastructure that is provided for the SMEs and that is built with them uh, in, 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 in a code co-design manner. So these are the actual things we can do on regional and national basis and we need to also push the policy makers to even go further with this because 
given the COVID crisis and given the big tech monopoly and the global digital revolution, uh, we need to put all the efforts here so that the small and businesses can survive, can be healthy again, and maybe then again take responsibility for vocational education. Um, we see that in Austria too, SMEs are dropping out to take apprentices, SMEs are dropping out to provide continuous uh, uh, fed for their staff because they're too busy with the crisis and too busy to keep their, their businesses alive. So just to give you some numbers uh, and how we stand uh, and, and what is there uh, to pick up, so to say, um, there will be a European Union structural funds again. There are two strands which are additional of, of the financial framework which is also in place. So there is an ESM pandemic fund which will hold a, about uh, 540 billion euros. There is a next generation temporary fund uh, addressed to COVID uh, which holds 500 and, uh, uh, 750 billion. And there is this ongoing financial framework which will hold uh, 1,100 billion until 2027. But in comparison, to the market capitalization of only the second quarter of 2020 of Apple, the European Union can, can, can decide whether they give away all those billions or buy one company. So you see how strong this, this, this tech monopoly at the moment is. Uh, so the, the, the net worth of, of Apple is at more or less the same amount or more than the European Union can provide for the next six years um, for financial framework um, if you not look at the, at the temporary funds they are, they are provided here. Um, this is more or less the, the conclusion, so please uh, join efforts together. Um, let's, keep, uh, let's keep an eye on, on what the SMEs really need and try to go with the policymakers on regional level, uh, provide external funding, provide digital infrastructure and educational infrastructure on a large scale so they can be healthy again and be responsible for, for FED themselves again. You have some more readings if you, uh, if you wanted to. Also, if you want to know more about um, the details of the studies, please don't hesitate to contact me. Here is the email. Uh, you can also give me a ring if you wanted to, um, and thank you very much for, for the invitation again.